Many of the experiments we do involve the use of acids and bases. And one property of acids and bases that's convenient to measure for a lot of things that we'd like to know is pH. So the way we're going to measure pH usually is with some sort of pH probe. These pH probes are set up through the Lab Pro interface to run through the computer, and we're going to use them quite a bit. So let's take a little look at these interfaces. The first thing that you noticed is these interfaces or these probes aren't just laying out on the benches. That's because it's very important for most pH probes that they be kept upright. So one of the things that we'll look at in a minute is some of the reasons for that. They're also stored in a little bit of storage solution. So we can take that off and look at what our pH probe looks like. Here's a pH probe. I've got it mounted up on a stand so we can take a closer look at it. And as we go down the probe, you'll start to notice a couple things. First of all, there are wires running through that probe. pH probes essentially work by measuring conductivity. So we've got a couple wires running down inside the probe. You can also see that there are some bubbles in the probe because these probes are full of a liquid with the electrode wires in it. And as we continue to travel down the probe, we get to that protective cap with the solution for storing the probe. So let's take a look at that will reach in here and slide that off and let me slide that ring up so that it's a little bit out of the way. Now you can see again there are the ends or there's the end of an electrode wire that's down inside that probe. As we move down you'll see that at the bottom of the probe there are some plastic fingers and let me turn those a little bit and a little glass bulb and in the middle of that glass bulb you can see the other end of an electrode wire the other thing you can probably see is these little plastic fingers are really good at protecting that very fragile glass bulb. They're also really good at, you see there are a whole bunch of drops of the storage solution in there. So one of your best friends when you're using a pH probe is going to be a Kim wipe. Now the glass bulb inside that protective plastic fingers is really very thin glass and it's quite fragile. So we don't want to get too crazy on wiping it clean, but usually if you just dab up at it with a piece of Kim wipe, there you can see it looked like we looks like we pretty much drew all the water, all of the storage solution out of that. So now we've got our pH meter bulb dried off and ready to use. Because that's such thin porous glass, it's also possible that these can dry out. So part of the reason we want to keep things upright, we don't want to ever tilt a pH probe over any more than we have to, is to keep the bubbles that are up in the bottom or up in the top of the probe from ending up in that little glass ball at the bottom. We also want to keep these wet. We want to keep them in storage solution because if this bulb starts to dry out, salts will start to crystallize in it and the meter won't work anymore. So be careful with that little glass ball in there. It's fairly fragile, but these plastic fingers do a really good job of protecting it from typical little bumps and bumps and dings. Because of a number of those features, pH probes are fairly sensitive to their calibration. So whenever you're using a pH probe, you're probably going to have to calibrate it fairly regularly as you take measurements. 
Unfortunately, it's not that difficult to calibrate a pH probe. We typically calibrate them doing a two-point calibration at pH 4 and pH 7. So, Whenever we're using a pH probe to take any sort of pH readings, the most convenient thing to have handy at your lab bench is a wash bottle with deionized water and just a big beaker to rinse into. Because every time this probe moves from sample to sample to sample, you want to give it a good rinse and dab it dry with a chem wipe. So before we can do anything, we really need to calibrate. We're going to calibrate using a pH 4 and a pH 7 buffer. So these are solutions that are at pH 4 and pH 7. We're going to use a two-point calibration to let us determine the correct conductivity readings that correspond to these two pHs. So let's get the computer set up first. As with all the probes that go through the Lab Pro interface, this is going to use Logger Pro. So let's get Logger Pro started. And when it boots up, it should automatically detect that there's a pH meter connect or pH probe connected. So it tells us pH up in the corner and gives us a live readout of the pH down here. To calibrate, we need to go up to the experiment menu and calibrate. And there's probably only going to be one thing hooked up, so it should be the Lab Pro 1CH1, that's channel 1 pH meter. So let's click on that. And it'll bring up the correct calibration page we want to calibrate now. So I said that pH meters work by measuring conductivity, in a sense. So what it's reading is a voltage. So this right now is reading 2.55 volts. All right, so we've got to take our little vial of storage solution off and get used to seeing this. You're going to be doing it a lot. Give it a rinse. Dab it dry. And we're going to use the pH 4 calibration buffer first. It really doesn't make that much difference which one you use first. So ready to go. And so I just put it in the pH 4 buffer. And you see that voltage dances around a little bit. As soon as that voltage stabilizes, we can come to this box. And this is the pH 4 buffer. Let's keep that. Okay, that's calibrated for the pH 4 buffer. Let's take it out. Put the cap back on the calibration buffer so that we don't foul it. Now, there's still some buffer on the tip of this being held in by those little plastic fingers. So let's give it a good rinse with deionized water. Dab it dry. And now we're going to use the yellow pH 7 buffer. So ready to go. Dip it in the buffer and if you keep an eye on that voltage reading, when I put it in the pH 7 buffer, you see that that reading changes. Once that reading settles down, now we can go to our second reading, tell it that it's pH 7 and keep that second reading. Now we're calibrated. Click Done. OK. We're calibrated at 4 and 7, so now our pH probe is ready to take measurements on other solutions. So now we've got our probe calibrated. All we have to do is put it in whatever solution we want to measure the pH of, and we should be able to read that pH on the screen. Typically, we don't want to leave these sitting out. Again, we don't want that bulb to dry up. So if you're not going to be using it for five or ten minutes, it's usually a good idea to pop it back in the storage solution and leave it sit that way. Those are pH probes. We're going to be using them quite a bit. Make sure you use them correctly and they'll give you a lot of really good data.